Raymond Kurzweil always knew he'd be an inventor. Even as a young boy growing up in Queens, New York, he found the idea of making something out of nothing magic. I was actually interested in magic, per se, but I realized that actually creating technology was a more profound form of magic. And it's a magic that when you reveal the methods of how you did it, the magic doesn't go away. For several decades now, Ray Kurzweil has been revealing his wizardry to the world, developing a wide range of products that have helped thousands to read, to create, and to live richer lives. What excites me is to take some scientific advance and actually see it directly have an impact on, on people doing something creative or overcoming a disability or having some, some cultural or social impact. By age 16, Kurzweil had built and programmed a computer that composed original melodies. That innovation earned Kurzweil a spot on I've Got a Secret and won him a Westinghouse Science Prize. That Kurzweil chose to apply technology to the arts no doubt came from his parents. His mother was an artist and his father a musician. He would have to write out the scores by hand, run them off on a mimeograph machine, raise money to hire musicians, and finally he would get to hear his composition. But then if he didn't like it and he wanted to change it, he could maybe make a few changes on the fly, but he would otherwise have to dismiss the musicians and start all over again. Today, a musician in her dorm room can play all the different parts of an orchestral composition, hear a whole orchestra, modify it uh, the way you would process a letter on a word processor. He started his first company, which developed computer systems to match high school students with colleges at age 19, and later sold the company to Harcourt Brayson World, earning enough money to pay his way through MIT. There, he studied with artificial intelligence pioneer Marvin Mensky, who'd mentored the young Kurzweil in high school, and who'd persuaded him to come to MIT. Scanner moving to the top of page. For Stevie Wonder and others unable to see, Kurzweil's revolutionary reading machine offers a bridge to the mainstream. This innovation made such headlines that in 1976, Walter Cronkite used it to read his trademark sign-off. We wouldn't program them directly. Today, as chairman and CEO of Kurzweil Technologies, Raymond Kurzweil is helping oversee a new generation of innovations expanding the scope of what is possible. An early Kurzweil invention was this voice recognition system for medical reporting, and he's still interested in medical technology. His medical learning company helps doctors hone their skills by simulating a doctor-patient interaction. His cybernetic poet is a downloadable program that helps users to write poetry by offering word suggestions based on a broad range of options. Another Kurzweil project is called Aaron. Originally the development of artist Harold Cohen, Kurzweil plans to market this program, which can generate original works of art on your computer screen. In virtual reality, you can be someone else. And then there is Ramona, the virtual alter ego of Ray Kurzweil. Ramona hosts KurzweilAI.net, the home of the big thinkers. Have a question about technology and how it's likely to evolve? Just ask Ramona. Raymond Kurzweil told me that. As an entrepreneur and as an author, Ray Kurzweil believes in the power of ideas and creative thinking. His work has helped to humanize technology and, he hopes, to inspire a new generation to think imaginatively. I think it's important for kids to realize that they have the freedom and the authorization to explore their own ideas and that it's okay to fail. If you try 20 things and one thing works, uh, you're doing well. And really the essence of creativity is a willingness to try things out and to fail a lot until you get something that, that is a step forward and that you can, that you can build on. <laughs>